Welcome to our current video titled, How Can I Make My EPK Stand Out? Our guest today is Dan Melnick. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this is Dan Melnick, uh, GM of Sonic Bids. Uh, I've been working in the music industry for about 15 years. Um, before Sonic Bids, I owned a uh, content promotion agency called Turnstile Music Group for a little under a decade. Um, very much New York-based guy. And uh, happy to be here today. So, Dan, what makes an artist's EPK stand out enough to get the attention of a booking agent or a talent buyer? Okay, great question. So, I think first and foremost, understanding like the purpose of your EPK is is very important. I think some artists probably put, I, most artists probably put too much effort into it or too little effort into it because, I mean, I think I even remember when I was making my own P EPKs. Uh, when I was younger for my old band projects that I was involved in, um, you get on the fence of like, is this for industry or is this for fans? Right. And that's really the, the, the decision that needs to be made. And the answer is always, it's always for industry. That's completely separate from what you're doing, especially nowadays. You don't need an EPK to represent yourself online. You have a billion different social media options for that. Right. Whereas, 15, 20 years ago was a lot different. So you were, you, you were on that fence. So continuing to understand that where, whatever EPK service you may use, sonicbids.com, um, make sure that it's catered towards a professional audience, meaning that the information that you put up there is all different resume pitches for potential bookings and potential agents and potential managers. So the more important aspects of that EPK are as follows, like you could actually check those boxes, manager, agent, um, talent buyer. So as we were discussing talent buyer wise, making sure that your past shows and your upcoming shows are up to date fully, um, making sure you have appropriate media on the page. Um, from a talent buying perspective, we're not going to sit and listen to, actually, I have instructed my bookers many times never to listen to more than one minute of any artist unless you're actually in discussion of booking that artist. So on, while scouting, never listen to more than a minute. And the rule of thumb is, is this annoying? If not, then, you know, you can move forward and try to see what you got with them. Um, and so it's less about like your album. We don't really, we don't really care because your album can sound completely different. Um, on the on the live side, so having a live representation of how you sound, how you look, and your interaction with your crowd, and how many people are in that crowd are probably the major four check boxes when it comes to the media and your talent buying um, grabbers, I guess you could say, and um, making sure because it's a professional facing EPK. Uh, that your press, if you have press, is all well documented. You know, whatever mention that you may have in any local publication um, or anything of notoriety, even on like an online post, is something to make sure you keep track of and, and keep updated on there. <clears throat> you probably don't even remember all the stuff that you do when you're when you're an artist, so it's almost like a good thing to a good measure to update that as often as anything pop, pops out that you're like even a little bit proud of on the professional side. Um, the videos, the calendar, the press, yeah, that's like those are the major three for the talent buying side. And then look, of course, if you're looking for management, you want to make sure that branding wise is consistent. Um, you know, your brand, and this extends even past the EPK, and this starts to go more towards like your fan base, right? Is like, make sure that whatever brand you're portraying to your fan base or your fans is the same across your EPK. Um, meaning that like, you know, you're not on your EPK, you're not like the fun loving party band. And then, you know, when you're clicking on your Instagram, you're all super serious and about, you know, issues and stuff which is also fine it's, it's great that's a great brand if you're gonna have it on both sides of things but make sure your brand is consistent uh, across the board what's an appropriate length for a bio in an epk oh god no one's gonna read those things that's it's so self-serving man nobody cares just keep it short 
I, again, it's not for your fans on your on your on your you know outwardly facing social media or website if you're into that. Um, you know, you can be more self-indulgent on that side of things, but you know, I don't even think on a management side, anyone's good, like no one even reads emails that are more than two paragraphs. So don't do that. Thanks, Dan. That was very valuable information. That concludes our video titled, how can I make my EPK stand out with Dan Melnick, the general manager of Sonic Bits. 